All right, it's that time again. It's time for another midweek video. Midweek video number 14. The proper way to make a bush pot oven for dirt cheap. Let's get to it. So today I want to appeal to the common man. Now, common man is just a phrase. It could be male or female. Um, somebody who wants to conserve resources and save their money and get the biggest bang for their buck. And to do that, we're going to make a simple do-it-yourself bush pot oven for under $20. And that's a big thing to me because 20 bucks, most people can drop 20 bucks on stuff, okay? But when you drop 50 or 60, it could be a problem down the road. So what I've done is I pieced this together. I've searched high and low dollar stores, Family Dollar, Walmart, Target, online. And I found an eight quart bush pot from Mainstays, okay? And this bad boy here was $8 and change. Let's round up and say nine bucks, okay? The second thing you're gonna need for this project is a simple cooling rack. $3 and change from Walmart, rounds up four bucks. So nine and four, $13. All we're gonna do here is so simple it's stupid. We're gonna measure, we're gonna simply cut this with wire snips and place it into our bush pot horizontally and create an oven. So before we get too far down the trail, I'm gonna go ahead and address this because someone's gonna say, Walmart, Target, I'm not buying that Chinese shit. Well, here's a reality check. Most companies, and I'm gonna say 99.999, including smaller companies online, source their products from China. And here's why. The company themselves could say made in America or an American made company, but they're gonna source it from China. Why? Because it's cheaper. That's why you can get this bush pot for nine bucks instead of a hundred, okay? Pick a company, any company, all right? Most of their stuff is made in China and most of their stainless steel um, items come from China. There's a site called Alibaba. Anybody can go on there. You can buy one item or you can buy items in bulk. They all come from overseas. Most companies slap logos on them and call it their own. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's the American way. Dirt cheap, maximize profit, okay? So once you get over that and over yourself, take a look at your house, your cell phone, your cars, parts. Most stuff comes from overseas, okay? So now with that aside, most companies that do that jack the price up we've already covered that thirteen dollars here i'm going to sell it for 50. i searched high and low most bush pots i could find from smaller companies that are one gallon or more are 30 bucks most grills that slide in to make ovens 10 to 13 bucks so when you're done with that you're looking at 43 dollars before taxes and add shipping to that some companies there are no shipping okay but you're gonna spend 50 bucks for something half this size. When I spent 13, doubled my size, doubled the amount of people I can feed, and that's a win for me. And in my opinion, that appeals to the common man. So with that, let's get started. Now taking our oven here and our drying rack, there's several ways you can do that. You could do it lengthwise or you could do it this way. I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way. I want this rack to sit in here about one third off the bottom, not at the halfway point, about one third from the bottom. That way it gives me more room for the items I slide inside here. So taking the rack, I'm gonna go ahead and just look at this, where the one third is, place it to the edge that's gonna slide inside here, and I can see where I have to cut this at. So I'm gonna raise it up a little bit more, and ideally I want it to land on one of these lines so I can just snip the other side of it, and it will sense give me four sides to this. One, two, three, and one of these lines here will be four. So we'll look at that, then we'll go ahead and cut it. The last step here, you wanna go ahead and cut these small nubs off. That way it slides into your bush pot evenly. And that take a matter of seconds. Slide this bad boy in here. Look at that, we're about one third. That's perfect, that's right where I want it. Now we gotta trim this front section so we can actually see where it's recessed. That one right there. So we're gonna go, we're gonna count one, two, three, and we're gonna cut this off right there. So one more cool thing about this bush pot is these rivets happen to fall exactly at one third if you were to divide this in threes. Okay, so here's our 
cooling rack that we turn into our grill. We're gonna slide this thing inside here. And there you go. I'm torn. I got two different meals in mind, but we'll see what this bad boy takes us. Right now I got a processed firewood and it's about 90% humidity and about 95 degrees. So this is gonna suck. Bear with me. Fat wood tip and trick number one. Process that fat wood the same way you would when you collect your tinder, kindling, and fuel. When we collect that, we think of pencil lead, pencil, finger, and thumb size sticks. So why not do the same thing for fat wood? Far too often, we just process it into a pile of small, minute powder or small slivers. It ignites perfectly with a spark, and that's exactly what you want. But then it burns out just as fast. Why not add some toothpick sized pieces to that or small slivers, then baton the remaining sections into something that resembles a pencil lead. That way you get a longer burn time to ignite that marginal or damp kindling and then fuel. Processing that fat wood the way that I did will give me a longer burn time. Think of it as a mini campfire. We have our minute shavings, our powder. We have larger particles in there like toothpick size, larger shavings, and even small pieces that resemble the size of say, a pencil or pencil lead, okay? Now I can add my actual kindling to that, then my fuel. Here's a reality check with this bad boy. Something this size, you're not gonna backpack through the woods. You're most likely not going to, okay? There's ways around that. You can put all your things inside here and put it on there and stuff it into a pack, a 30 liter pack, and you should be fine. But the reality is most people aren't going to, okay? But here's another reality check. Most people car camp. They tent camp, they camp in an RV. They go out to a spot with friends, family, loved ones. Um, so smaller versions are available online. We talked about that for 40 to 50 bucks after taxes and shipping. But you're gonna get one to two servings cooked inside that bush pot. This will feed a family of four, okay? At least. And the meal I'm gonna to make today, I'll show you that, okay? So if you're going out in a group setting, you're gonna want something larger to support or sustain that group. And 13 bucks, you can't go wrong. Now for the million dollar question. People are gonna ask, well, how long does it take to cook that? Here's my answer. Without a thermometer, I don't know. It's potatoes and eggs. Cook the potatoes and eggs to your liking, and you'll be in business. And there we go, guaranteed to feed a family of four, 
for one hungry ass corporal. Catch you all in a few. Mm-mm-mm. Look at that egg right there. Now right next to my hardcore hammers link in my description box, you're gonna see my Etsy store. Click that bad boy. We got about 6,000 followers in there and 1 million subs. You guys are missing out. We just finished all of our frog gigs. All those orders are currently shipped out. We're working on Frontier Strikers right now. Some are being sold with flint, some without. And Sunday we're dropping Corporal's Corner Frontier Forks. Check that bad boy out. They're all made from 5 16 steel. They're all hardened up and quenched and should last you a lifetime. All right, on a final note, supporting small businesses is always a plus. So if you're the kind of person that you find a small company that you want to support, by all means do so. But in this video I showed you a cheaper route to go if you're just interested in saving money. Choice is yours. On that note, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One on my Amazon influencer page and two on my Etsy page. Both links are found inside my description box. Now please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. If you're out in the field, have some fun, I'm going to catch you next time. Kind of like one of those monkeys. Just get a second one of these and I'll be like... <laughs>